Hello again. In this video, we will look at how to use Australian Christian Homeschooling's PACE curriculum. You'll see a mum and her daughter going through their daily routines of homeschooling. You'll see them working with booklets, which are called PACEs, setting daily goals, scoring and correcting work, doing tests, and using our online learning management system Following these procedures will greatly assist both you as a supervisor and your children in their learning. My wife and I found that following the procedures was the best way to keep our family on track during this learning journey. So enjoy this video. You'll probably want to watch it several times as you commence homeschooling. And I recommend that you review it occasionally just to ensure that you are following the procedures well. This short video tutorial will show you how to use the Australian Christian Homeschooling's PACE curriculum. First, the student should set goals for each PACE to be completed that day. Next, the student should commence work on PACE material. When starting a PACE, the student should read out the My Goals and Vocabulary on the first page to the supervisor. Next, the student begins work, reading all instructions and source material, before answering any questions, using a lead pencil only. If the student has any questions, they should request assistance from the supervisor. Sometimes the supervisor may need to consult the score key if a difficult problem is encountered. The student continues working through the pace until they reach a scoring strip. The student then notifies the supervisor that they are ready to score which means to mark their work. The supervisor briefly scans their work for anything irregular, such as an unanswered question, and then gives permission for the student to score. Leaving their pencil at the desk, the student then goes to the area designated for scoring and uses a score key and a red pen to check their work. Correct answers should be left unmarked and an X should be placed in the pace margin of any question that has been answered incorrectly. The student should not put an X anywhere other than in the margin. When all the work has been scored, the student marks a red X in the first box of the scoring strip, then returns to their office, leaving the red pen at the scoring table. If all questions were answered correctly, then the student proceeds to the next section of the PACE and begins work. If any questions were scored as incorrect, then the student must now completely erase these questions and then restudy the PACE material before attempting to answer the questions marked with an X again. When all answers have been corrected, the student puts an X in pencil in the correct mistakes box of the scoring strip and notifies the supervisor that they wish to rescore. At this point, the supervisor should look for red X's to see which questions were marked incorrect. If a student has many red X's down the margin, this is a good sign that they did not understand the material covered and may need revision. It can be a very useful strategy at this point to pick up the pace and quiz the student on the questions to test their understanding. If only a few corrected errors are present, or if the quiz is answered successfully, then the student is allowed to rescore their work at the scoring station. If the questions have been accurately corrected, then the red X in the margin should be circled with a red pen by the student. If the question is still wrong, then it should be left with an X and the whole process should begin again. If all questions have been accurately corrected, 
Then a red X is put in the rescore box of the scoring strip and the student may continue on to the next section. The student will then continue through the pace in this manner, constantly interacting with and having their work reviewed by the supervisor as they score, correct and rescore their work. There are three checkpoints throughout the pace called checkups. These are formative tests that will review the material studied in the work the students have just covered. When a student reaches a checkup, they should notify their supervisor, who will initial the checkup with a green pen. This can be an opportunity for the supervisor to give the student a brief quiz about the work studied before initialing the checkup. The student should then attempt to complete the checkup. They may look back in their pace for answers they have forgotten, but they should attempt to complete the checkup without having to review. When the checkup is completed, it should be scored in the same manner as described before, and then the student is allowed to continue on in the pace. There is one final formative test at the end of the pace called a self-test, which tests students' understanding of the whole pace. Many students prepare for the self-test by reviewing the checkups before notifying the supervisor. The student should notify the supervisor when they are ready to take the self-test. The supervisor then signs the self-test and staples the rest of the pace together, leaving only the self-test free to prevent the student from looking back in the pace for answers. The student should then take the self-test and score in the usual manner, but a result should be recorded prior to correcting any mistakes. If the student receives less than 80% on their self-test, this demonstrates a significant weakness in content mastery. The student should review the pace diligently before repeating the erased self-test. If the student receives above 80% on the self-test, then they are ready to take the PACE test on the next school day in the morning. PACE tests must not be issued on the same day the student completes the self-test of a PACE. The student sits the PACE test the day after the self-test has been successfully completed. It is the supervisor's responsibility to determine if the student is ready for the PACE test. The supervisor should take the time needed to make sure the student understands the concepts covered in the PACE. Quizzing the student on failed self-test questions is a useful technique. When the student is ready for the PACE test, they then go to the testing area with only a pencil, rubber and ruler. From year seven onwards, students can use a calculator if required. No other material is to be made available to the student while they are testing, and they cannot ask their supervisor or another person for assistance. The supervisor should then observe the student until the PACE test is completed. The PACE test should then be scored by the supervisor using the test key. No corrections should be made to the PACE test and only the supervisor should mark the test. Any PACE test that scores less than 80% is a failed test. The supervisor will need to review the material the student did not understand and order a new PACE to be recompleted by the student before the test can be sat again. If the student passes the PACE test, then the result should be recorded by the supervisor on the supervisor's progress card, and the student can be issued the next PACE according to the curriculum prescription. All PASS tests should be mailed to Australian Christian Homeschooling on the first of each month. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial on how to use Australian Christian Homeschooling's PACE curriculum. Well, there you have it. 
Now you're ready to start homeschooling. Thank you for partnering with us at Australian Christian Homeschooling. It's our prayer that you will have a fulfilling experience as you supervise your children and that your children will enjoy developing academically, physically, socially and spiritually through homeschooling with Australian Christian Homeschooling. Thank you.